I bit that over the wall. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Now, first of all, my name's Tom. I'm a teaching professional at Norwood Park Golf Centre in the UK. And obviously due to the global pandemic, I'm unable to teach at my golf club. So I thought I'd come to YouTube, something I've been looking at doing for a very long time. Um, and hopefully I can give you guys some great golf related content to help your game. If you do enjoy my content please do give me a subscribe below if you want to follow me on social media i'll put the links uh, down here as well and uh, let's get cracking with the first video now today i want to talk about short game now there's no doubt about it short game is massively important across all levels of golfers it doesn't matter what handicap you are we're all human we're all going to miss greens which means we do rely on our short game to dig us out of poor situations. I think as well, if your short game isn't up to scratch, not only will you struggle to get out of those situations, but it also puts a bit of pressure on your approach play. If you're you know, not feeling confident about getting up and down, there's more pressure on you to hit the green. So I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna go through three basic forms of chip shots, talk a bit about how you would execute those shots and the results you would expect to get from them. So let's get cracking. So first of all, we're going to look at a fairly basic chip shot. Not looking to lob the ball right up in the air, nor are we looking to roll it across the ground. Um, we're looking for a kind of medium flight, so roughly around 50%. So 50% in the air and 50% roll. For that, I'd be using either a sand wedge or a gap wedge. I've got a 50 degree here. So just keeping it dead simple here, we're going to go straight in with setup. I want to position the ball roughly around the middle of your stance. I see so many golfers getting the ball positioned way back in their stance creates this real steep digging action. If you create that steep digging action, you're gonna bring this into play, the leading edge. We wanna use this part of the golf club, the bounce just underneath. That bounce is gonna do its job and glide underneath the golf ball, picking and lifting the ball up in the air. It also gives you that little bit more forgiveness there. So if you do catch the ground slightly before the golf ball, you'll still get a half decent result. So to do that, we wanna get the ball middle of the stance, not too far back. Don't want you to kind of push the hands forward either. See so many golfers getting their hands crazy forward. Again, promotes that kind of digging action. And we're just gonna press a little bit of weight into this left side. Not a crazy amount, just kind of 60, 40 on this left side. That's gonna just make sure that club descends into the golf ball because although we're not looking to dig, we still want the club to be traveling downwards when we make contact. There's so many you know, bad chips of the golf ball trying to lift the ball up into the air. They stay on their back foot and they, you know, it causes all sorts of problems in terms of ball striking from things and fats. And then you go ball position roughly towards the middle of the stance, a little bit of pressure on the left side. You see my feet are a little bit closer together than they would be for a full shot. That's just because we're not, you know, we're not trying to generate a nice full goal, so we're not trying to, it's not about power, it's about control with this kind of shot. I'm then going to position the hands pretty much central to the golf ball, I'm not going to get them forward, and I'm just going to keep the wrist nice and loose. Again, something I see very often is kind of this robotic action, fear of kind of flexing those wrists a little bit. Nothing to be fearful of. As long as you've got that weight pressed in that left side, you'll still get that nice descending blow. And we're just looking to glide underneath the golf ball and pop the ball up into the air. So again, that was a good strike. If I get one slightly behind the ball, that was slightly behind the ball. Because I used the bounce, the club was able to glide along the surface rather than dig in. That's what's going to give me the most forgiveness on that shot. In terms of speed, we're not looking to hammer it, nor are we looking to kind of play a little fiddly one. You see how I'm maintaining acceleration right through the shot. I'm not slowing up. I'm not trying to give it you know, a ton of acceleration. It's just a nice rocking back and rocking through. Now, how do we adapt that technique um, when the shot is required to be a little bit lower? So you've got more green to work with. You want to say land the ball 25% of the way and let it roll 75% of the way. Well, the first thing we need to do is change the club. So I've swapped my 50 degree for an eight iron, so there's less loft on the golf club. Now the principles still apply exactly the same. I still want to have a little bit of weight on my left side. I still want the ball position to be fairly central. But all we're going to do now is kind of change the, the rhythm and timing. So rather than thinking we're getting the club up here and kind of having a nice flowing action, we're going to think of this more like a putt than a chip. So we're going to position ourselves exactly the same, ball position, middle of the stance, a little bit of weight on the left side, 
I personally like to grip down it a little bit because we've now got a much longer club. Don't necessarily want that length of club. Um, so I, I like to grip down it a little bit, just feels like it gives me that little bit more control. I'm gonna have the hands again, pretty much central to the golf ball. And we're just gonna look to put a nice, smooth, almost putting-like stroke on the ball. That just gets the ball popping up because all we're really doing with this shot is trying to just get it lifted over that little bit of rough in front of us and get it rolling the rest of the way. Dead easy shot to play. You know, if you get the principles right, you know, in terms of the percentage shot, I know people talk a lot about this. What's the percentage shot? What's the safest play? Definitely feel like this is probably one of the safer play um, when you're around the green, but your situation can sometimes dictate your choice in, in, in shot selection. You can't always go to this, but it is a great way to play chip shots if there's green there to use. So now looking at the other end of things, so if we are, we've missed the green and there's very little green to work with, um, so you've typically you've short-sided yourself, you've missed on the wrong side, left yourself a difficult chip, we might have to go to a higher lob shot. So for that I'd be using something like a 58 degree um, lob wedge. Again, principles pretty much the same. This time though, I'm maybe gonna even add a little bit more lock than what I've got in the club. So don't be, don't be afraid to open that club face out. The more you open that club face out, the more the bounce is presented. Remember that bounce is your friend. It's, it's forgiveness in the shot. I'm gonna set up exactly the same ball position, middle of the stance. I'm gonna get a little bit of weight on my left side. Again, only about 60%. This time I'm gonna really feel like I glide underneath the golf ball, loose wrist up really important with this shot we don't want to stay robotic over this shot nice and flowing and just glide underneath the golf ball get it, get it popping up nice and high loaded with spin and like i say if you open that face it makes it so much easier to use the bounce don't be afraid to open the face you know even on a on a <laughs> a bit that like over the wall <laughs> example of a high lump shot <laughs> but the biggest thing I would stress is throughout all of those golf shots you'll see that I wasn't trying to help the ball do anything if I was trying to lift the ball in the air I wasn't staying on my back foot trying to lift it if I was trying to hit a low kind of bump and run shot I wasn't kind of crazy over here trying to drill it low just a few simple things in setup really help promote the kind of shot that we're after and you really don't need to help it do anything. I only see poor results from people who are trying to help the ball into the air or try and drive it low into the ground. Hopefully those tips help you. Um, let me know if anyone tries these. Um, pop, pop a comment down below, um, your thoughts. If you've got any other thoughts on how you like to play, play those shots, this is only personally what I like to play and how I like to see you know, my students chip. Um, but keep me posted. Thanks for watching.